right, so let me be honest. Most of the Photoshop tools that you guys see on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll pretty much never use. Or at least very, very, very rarely. Very. I hate odd numbers. So allow me to actually run through and actually showcase the tools that you might actually use every single day and how they work. The first tool though is absolutely the everything pack. Just saying, I have to plug it. The everything I promise you with the absolute best one purchase you'll ever need to make as an artist. And I mean that because it's from me, custom assets, free packs for life for one purchase. You get free packs forever, frequently. If that doesn't sell you, I have no idea, but let's hop in the video. Also, if you own the everything pack, say me in the comments. So to start, we have the move tool, or you can press V on your keyboard for the shortcut. This, of course, obviously allows you to move your selected layers around your canvas. So the cool part a lot of you do not realize is the option to hold control and select on your working document to pinpoint certain layers. And of course, it comes in handy if you're like unorganized, you know, but if this does happen to you and you try to select a layer and it only ends up selecting a group on the top left hand side, click on the right of the auto select, click the drop down and choose layer and then you're good. Now the next staple is the lasso tool or L on your keyboard for the shortcut. You'll find yourself using this tool to easily circle around objects you need to cut out quickly. Simply to circle around something, right click and layer via cut. In addition though, the patch tool is another tool that acts just as a lasso tool. However, the patch tool is my favorite quick fix tool to use to remove dust, hairs or even like acne. So the patch tool or J on your keyboard for the shortcut, you wanna circle around something that's unwanted in a photo then you want to click inside your circle and move it to a clear spot it's honestly super easy now on the topic of quick the quick selection tool is next or w for the shortcut quick select is actually under the category of a few other similar options that are also very good magic wand tool and the object selection tool you want to use the magic wand tool when trying to actually quickly cut out solid color shapes or backgrounds that need to be deleted fast also up top is the tolerance option for the record the higher your tolerance is the more the actual colors that are very similar get selected the lower it is the less of the color that's similar gets selected just so you guys know. On the other hand, quick selection is when you have a clean line or a quality edge of the object that you either want to delete the outside or inside of. Simply click and it attaches new colors or clean lines while you hover and move your mouse to continue the selection. Then lastly is the object selection tool. Although I rarely use this just because it's like such a new tool where you actually would click and highlight an object to get a full selection of something. It is super handy if the object itself can be clearly seen and understood by Photoshop. Now the brush tool. Now you might say you're not Illustrator, but that's completely fine because it doesn't matter because it's also one of the most essential tools in Photoshop and I'll show you guys why. Somewhat like an object selection tool, you'll have something called the select subject option when you're actually on one of the quick selection tools. Let's say you have a photo of a person. Select W, then choose the option select subject up top. It will frame as best as it can anything that is in focus or whatever Photoshop determines whatever the hierarchy is. Now, sometimes the selection isn't great and this will actually find myself using the brush tool a lot. So to go ahead and actually fix something like this, you wanna press Q on your keyboard for the shortcut to jump into and an exit out of quick mask mode. Here, things will actually have a red hue determining whatever is actually in red is being selected. And we can actually fix that selection with a black or white brush. Simply use the white brush to erase the selection away for the mess ups. And you can use a black brush if you ever overshoot or need to fill the selection back in. And that's actually honestly the only way I really cut people out nowadays, I, I mean that. So if you're still cutting things out with pen tool, I don't know, man. <laughs> With that though, the brush tool will also help you with erasing things you don't want naturally. Not the eraser tool, ever. I honestly haven't used that tool for like five, six years. If you wanna actually erase something, select the layer and use a layer mask and then erase it with the actual brush tool just to make sure you make non-destructive erases from your layer. The layer mask and brush tool combo allow you at any moment to go back and fix something that you erase or need to erase without you actually losing the original photo or composition. And just because I love you and if you might be like an illustrator, if you guys do use the brush tool and like the eraser to kind of quickly erase things and like obviously fill things in, use the tilde key. You guys know what that is? It's usually like next to the escape button. You can use your brush and then at any point you wanna switch to an eraser, you can use tilde and it'll toggle it for a second while you hold it down and then you can just, you know, 
erase something. But that only matters if you're like an illustrator. If not, you never erase ever. Anyway, if you ever want to make a shape, you want to make sure you use the shape tool. And for the record, I'm not referring to the marquee shape tools either. Those hover is when you actually click and drag to make your shape and then you right click fill in a color in order to actually make something work. However, a lot of beginners are just afraid of this guy right here, the shape tool. Now, if you've ever used Illustrator, the shape tool in Photoshop works in a very similar way. Once selected on the top left, there are your options for your fill and your stroke colors. To have a color in your rectangle and no stroke, click on the fill, select a color, then go to your stroke and then select the box in the top left with the red line going through to turn it off. And then of course, vice versa for the other way around. And lastly for the tools is the pen tool. Now don't get it twisted. I'm gonna echo this one more time. I have yet to ever use the pen tool to cut someone out in literally years. But for Photoshop, you'll likely use the pen tool to vector out or trace a more straighter edge object for a cleaner cut. Now, of course, navigating the pen tool is fairly easy, but definitely hard as a beginner. It's gonna take a lot of time to actually master, of course. You click to start an anchor point. You click again to add one. You can click again and then simultaneously drag to make a handle to fill in certain shapes and then you'll always need to make sure you actually close the path by selecting the first point that you made now these nine tools is it nine i don't know i don't know Anyway, these tools will end up being your best friends and most likely the only actual tools you'll use for your first couple years in Photoshop. Of course, given away from the obvious things like your filters, your filter galleries and things like that, you'll naturally just find that and just kind of enjoy it on your own. Oh, and then of course, obviously your text tool as well. Like that's just the right stuff. If I had to teach you that part, we, we're, we're in a slippery slope. However, there's also one more thing that I absolutely think you just need to know is camera raw filter. Here, of course, is where most of your color correcting will actually end up being at. You can color correct your temperature. You can add some texture, shadows, maybe even get rid of certain colors in a photo itself with the color mixer options. Basically, all things color correcting is done here. And if this is you, with all those adjustments and like curves and levels on that single layer clip mask onto it, no. But don't forget this, okay? Hold space, click and drag to move your canvas around, Alt scroll wheel to zoom in and out very slowly, and then holding Alt and Shift will actually speed up the rate in which you zoom. I just felt like you guys would wanna know that. But for my final closing notes, all I really wanna say is that half of like feeling good in Photoshop is just honestly learning how to navigate it. Know where your essential tools are, and also don't forget to look at your project from a bunch of different angles. You can do that by the way, just by pressing R and then like rotating the canvas. And then you can rotate it by certain integers by just holding Shift and then can put it back in the middle just so you guys know that too but with that being said that is the end of the video here today and those are your basic tools that you'll use in photoshop pretty much forever and like everything else is honestly just i'd never really use it ever that's why it's like so fun and cool because like to be a tutorialist because i can just like bring up the repeat a text tool and you might not even know what that is because it doesn't actually exist but if i said it did and i show you where it is then i win right so yeah, you, you get the point anyway so so hq out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys little much love peace enjoy your day as always don't forget to check out the everything pack the best purchase you can ever make for an artist ever impossible on sensohq.com or selfie.com so sensohq you can check it out and all that good stuff enjoy